offered plea deals to three defendants in the deadly 17th Street shooting, a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old. Channel 2's Audrey Washington was the only reporter in court. She's live in the 17th Street Bridge now. That's in Midtown Atlanta. So Audrey, one victim's mother says she still, she still doesn't think this deal goes far enough. Right, understandably, as a grieving mother, no amount of prison time will ever be enough. As you know, where I'm standing right now along the 17th Street Bridge in Midtown Atlanta is where it all happened. This is where two boys were shot and killed, and today the people involved learned their fate. I feel like the craziest thing that seems to be completely unique to rap music is people gaining a legitimate fan base, almost reaching the point where they could take off on a major scale just to crash out and get sentenced to decades in prison for a murder. Unfortunately, this seems like we have a sequel to Tay-K with a 16 year old rapper Lil Perk who was just sentenced to 20 years in prison for an alleged shooting that happened outside the Atlantic Station area of Midtown Atlanta. This incident shocked the city, took out one of the family members of one of the biggest rappers in the area, Ola Runt, and the story is absolutely insane with everything you can imagine in the Raffield Street War from it all happening in 4K CCTV footage in a busy train station to a dude apparently tunneling into someone else's jail cell to confront a another person responsible for the shooting bruh i swear we gotta talk about the beef that got lil perk 20 years in prison and a whole lot of other damage to the atlanta community but before we do man i'm gonna need you to do something for me like comment subscribe we're gonna run this up make sure you check out the merch link in the description at staysafeworld.com hit that notification bell so whenever i post y'all just tune in right away man let's get into this <laughs> Midtown space, uh, and again, a senseless death uh, involving uh, a handgun. Uh, so, uh, first, I'd like to offer my condolences to the family uh, coming after Thanksgiving and headed to Christmas. Uh, the last thing that they should be prepared for is a funeral of their children. On a fateful day in 2022, a group of young teens would walk through the Atlantic Station neighborhood in Midtown Atlanta, changing their futures forever. It seems being at the wrong place at the wrong time resulted in a 12 year old and 15 year old getting murked in one of the craziest gang related shootings I've seen in a minute. In order to understand how it came to this though, we gotta go through some of the background of the beef between two gangs in the city, YC and 5L. Ola Runt, a buzzing rapper in Atlanta that could have reached superstardom if multiple arrests didn't hold back his career and he was a top member in the 5L gang, an infamous street organization known for having beefs in the city with other top gangs like 4L and apparently a smaller gang based out in the west side of Atlanta called YC or the Young Crew. Ola Run is currently in prison getting arrested in a citywide sweep called Operation Phoenix. The arrest of what's being called some of the most dangerous criminals operating in Atlanta. Fox 5's Morris Diggs was there for the announcement and has the details. A relationship that started Operation Phoenix. Stop the violence. To make a dent, local and federal authorities launched a coordinated attack called Operation Phoenix. The bottom line is there are going to be consequences for committing violent crimes in Atlanta. And where we believe that it's necessary and warranted, we will do everything in our power to bring federal charges. And here are a dozen of the men, not kids, who are in federal custody or are being sought. But his little bro, Ola Cam, was still apparently repping 5L to the max. YC, the gang that Lil Perk and other smaller up and coming artists rep, pretty much have a reputation for beefing with almost anyone in the city from Homicide Gang to 4L and even members of PFK, even though they were once closer to that group. Having that many beefs in the city obviously means you should move different, try to avoid public transportation and being out in the open in general. However, being so young, none of these kids have any cars or money for uber apparently so altercations at railway stations and places where they hang out and post up like car meets will make you an active target and this is exactly where things went wrong and changed everyone's life for the worse where things go left on a cold evening at the end of November 25th, 2022, a group of teens were seen on surveillance camera leaving the Atlantic Station area in a large group. They were apparently members of YC pulling up to the area to pretty much just post up. They were just about to leave the area when they saw Cameron Jackson, aka Ola Cam, riding on a scooter in the area. A large fight broke out and then an apparent shootout ensued with Cameron Jackson getting hit multiple times. In the return fire, another teen who was just 12 years old 
Zion Charles was hit in the crossfire as well. Both of these succumbed to their injury soon after the shooting though. Apparently the group of teens all split up into different directions and hopped on different trains. Footage shows the teens flashing gang signs all on separate trains soon after the shooting. Apparently shortly after this time, Lil Perk apparently skipped town and posted that he was out in New York City. It soon became apparent though that he was going to get taken down for the shooting with the Atlantic Station shooting, basically making its ways on major news channels throughout the city. Going viral, the video footage of all of them sort of walking through. Shortly after, he was apprehended by police along with several others because of the very clear 4k evidence and the biggest lesson that someone can take away from this whole incident is that gang life is definitely not worth it because it seems that even if you're associated with a gang in the city pretty much nowhere is safe on top of the fact that you gotta look over your shoulder every single place that you go and apparently for some even prison is not even safe on May 17th, at the Rice Street Jail in Fulton County, a pretty much unthinkable incident happened that resulted in one of the members of YC who was apparently responsible for the Atlantic Station shooting to get stabbed in jail. It almost sounded like something at a Shawshank Redemption. You're about to see right here, Thomas allegedly dug through the shower wall that led to Russell's cell. The stabbing led to a shakedown in the jail and it turned up seven items of contraband. Well, according to the initial incident report, inmate KV on Thomas managed to dig a hole through a shower wall providing him access to an adjacent cell block where he launched an attack on a fellow inmate, De Rodney Russell. Russell sustained superficial stab wounds to his upper body within the facility's dedicated medical unit following the assault. Law enforcement authorities conducted a thorough shakedown of both cell blocks, leading to the alarming discovery of several weapons. Among the confiscated items were makeshift shanks crafted from parts of a dilapidated building structure. These findings underscore the perilous conditions that persist within the rice street facility on top of the fact if i'm not mistaken this is actually the same facility that an inmate got eaten alive by bed bugs so on top of the fact that you have to fight gangs and other people in the city that definitely don't vibe with you at all you gotta fight bed bugs bro to the point where they be eating people man you can't even believe this but as the investigation progresses the Fulton county sheriff's office has released a mugshot of kv and thomas to aid in public awareness additionally they have provided photographs showcasing the hole that thomas made managed to dig through the wall, highlighting the compromised structural integrity of the facility. Finally, images of the weapons confiscated during the subsequent shakedown serve as a stark reminder of inherent dangers posed by the presence of such contraband within the jail. The guy, Kavion Thomas, was apparently a member of 5L who decided to take it upon himself and do his own form of revenge for the shooting. This event in itself shows that there's a constant cycle of violence going on in Atlanta and it's not going to stop anytime soon. Part of the reason why is they're constantly at war over doing different retaliations for other retaliations and it just ends up killing people. But this incident is wild because it didn't just kill a grown man, it killed multiple teenagers that were some of them didn't even get to high school yet man. It's honestly crazy to see that these parents are burying their kids at so young. Obviously they didn't have the good amount of parental guidance because they were going and joining gangs but you gotta admit that people like ola run are definitely just as to blame as the people that pulled the trigger because ola run making all this money in the music industry should have taken the chance and you know been a positive example for the people around him obviously he didn't have positive examples as well growing up because he joined a gang but there's no reason for his little brother to have him join a gang as well because he already was able to get money and get out of the streets but unfortunately it's the streets what took down all of them which just shows that the streets are dead there's no real point obviously it's easier said than done looking at the outside looking in but at the end of the day it really makes no sense to be in the streets because look at what is happening you either end up in jail or you end up dead and even if you get money and blow up in a rap career you might just crash out as well just like ola run and lil perk currently lil perk just got sentenced to 20 years in prison for this shooting and got charged with both deaths even though he did not pull the trigger in the other death part of the reason why he was charged is because he was responsible because of the fact that someone else got hit up even though the other person who got hit up was in his crew he was deemed as responsible for starting this altercation it's honestly a wild scenario and it's something that you would not expect anyone that's that young 
to be a part of. Someone that's not even 18 years old getting charged and convicted and sentenced to 20 years for a gruesome murder that was caught in 4K and has to go to jail with grown men who are apparently tunneling through walls and stabbing people with pieces of a building, bro. This honestly sounds like hell. And this is a biggest message to kids and everyone everywhere that the gang life is definitely not for anyone because at the end of the day, look at what happens. And at the same time, we got people from multiple other gangs who have been dissing the deceased time and time and time again, basically carrying on the vicious cycle that is basically having everyone lose. But at the end of the day, it seems like the biggest losers were the people that went that day and were apparently riding the train and blatantly shooting people, man. But let me know in the comments what y'all think about this whole incident. Do you think that 5L is at fault or do you think that YC is at fault? Or do you think that this was just a big misunderstanding that could have been settled peacefully? But it seems like they were just young and dumb. And now they have their future that they will never look forward to living, man. But hey, let me know in the comments what y'all think. Real say, say shit. You already know what's going on. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. So whenever I post, y'all are tuned in.